What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and we got a spicy video for you today. Um, this is something that popped up on my Twitter feed. I don't even follow this person, but this is one of those times where the algorithm truly gets me, right? Understands what I want to talk about on a day to day basis. So I saw this tweet earlier today, and let me preface this by just saying, like, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the gaming industry. And for me personally, I try to pick my battles, right? Like you have like woke versus anti-woke stuff. You got console warrior stuff. You got a lot that goes on. And I, I dabble here and there, you know, giving my opinions on it. But something like this, I do think is something that we need to openly talk about. We need to openly mock. And we need to make sure that this kind of stuff does not become more regular. And uh, this is honestly an example of it actually being shown to people. You wonder how much of this stuff actually happens on a day-to-day -day or a game-by-game -game basis. And so well, what am I talking about? Well, we actually have a situation where there was an email that was sent out that talks about, hey, if you're positive, you can do a review this day, but if you're negative, you can do it that day. So let's read what happened here. So we got Julian Price, who posted a picture and says, since releases are very difficult, we ask that if your final evaluation of the game is not entirely positive, please post it at the release date, which is November 1st. If the review is positive and it's not mixed, you can post it on October 30th. And a lot of people were going after this guy. Well, after him, I think in terms of curiosity, not necessarily attacks. And he clarified because the first thing I thought was Life is Strange. I thought, for the love of God, this better not be Square Enix and this better not be Life is Strange. Now, the first uh, giveaway is the release date, right? So November 1st is the release date because you could put it out early if you're nice to the game, right? So that actually rules out Dragon Age, which is, which is another one that people thought. People were replying and saying, okay is it dragon age is it this is it that it's not dragon age and it's not life is strange now to me those are the big ones next week there's no other game next week that i'm getting but that doesn't mean there's not games next week that are releasing right now he clarified and he said this is an indie game and an indie publisher and so nobody that has gone after this guy or again just messaged out of curiosity nobody has actually figured out what game it is okay so and, and honestly okay i'm going to be very careful with my wording here we need to figure out what game this is. And I say that in a way of this is something that you need to know so that we can stop this from ever happening. Now, I am not saying anything about threatening, harassing, nothing like that, okay? All I'm saying simply is calling it out. When we find out what game this is, we need as many people as possible to call it out because that is unacceptable. And now is where I'm starting to get a little bit heated. Uh, now, again, that does not mean attacking. The, and when I say attacking, I mean, you know, stepping over that line that we always talk about, right? There are human beings like making these games. And I think there's some stupid human beings that wrote that, but you cannot be going after these people in, in these super aggressive ways. So just want to make that clear. I don't think anybody in my audience would do that, but but I am personally extremely interested to know what game that is because that cannot happen. Now, you know, well, why? Well, why is it a big deal? Well, actually, it should be obvious why, but kind of like the long-term ramifications, right, is what I talked about in the beginning of this video. You know, there's a lot of distrust for media. I think that's fair. Just journalists in general, a lot of media is not trusted nowadays. Gaming journalists, which is kind of my forte and in my genre of, you know, what I talk about on the Internet, People don't really trust them either. I think uh, the trust is also continuing to drop year over year. And, you know, I always talk about review scores. We, we talk about a lot, you know, with gaming journalists. And, you know, when you have things like this that pop up. Now, this is more like behind the scenes that kind of leaked out. I wonder if he'll actually get in trouble for, for showing this. Because, like I said in the beginning, I wonder how often this happens. Now, I can tell you, like, you know, I get games. I don't get every game. I, for, probably for every game I ask for. I probably get like 30 to 40% of the games that I ask for. So most times it's a no, like literally the majority of times. But I do get games, and I probably get 10, 15, 20 games a year. I've never been told this once in my life. And if I was, now he said he actually turned it down. He, he responded, he says, I'm not doing that because of that kind of uh, the, the restriction to it. And yeah, I think nobody should do that because that, you know, right there and then, right, you're sending a signal. It actually hurts, I would say, the journalists, even though it's not necessarily their fault. It, it would be partially their fault because they're like opting in, right? This It's a contract. This is something where, hey, you know, we're going to restrict you. We're restricting you. If you have something positive and it's only positive, see, what's actually the most hilarious, I think, about that entire statement is the whole not mixed so like if it's negative 
you have to do it on the release date. If it's not even fully positive, which, you know, like, that would really hurt somebody like me, right? Because it's like, I don't, I don't know, there's very few games I completely dogpile and have nothing good to say. Skull and Bones I said good things about at parts. Suicide Squad I said good things about at parts. Maybe, like, South Park, uh, Snow Day, like, that game is pretty bad all the way around. But I'm sure I said one or two nice things, you know what I mean? But, like, even the worst games, I, I kind of mix it up. I don't think any game is just, like, purely everything about it is bad. Maybe there's a couple, but, like, not the majority, right? But somebody like me, on the reverse side, even games I really, really like, I always talk about the name. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is my game of the year, I talked about the negatives. And I still do whenever I bring it up. I talk about all that I loved and then the few things that I thought were not good about it. And it's like, okay... That's a good, for me, that's still, like, informative. That's a good review, and I'm telling people overwhelmingly that the game is good, but I gave mixed feed, you know, as part of it was mixed, right? So that wouldn't classify under this thing. Now, obviously, it's not Square Enix, it's not Final Fantasy, but it's like, how can you think that's a good idea? Either way, if you're them writing this thing up, that makes you look terrible. That makes you look like you're forcing just positivity. So why would anybody do it? Like, why would you actually do that? And then if any anything comes out that uh, say the review comes out on the 30th well obviously you know it's going to be positive right you're going to get eights nines and tens how can you trust that as a consumer when you know that the reason you're reading the review so next wednesday if you're reading the review for this game or watching the review for this game that literally means that they had to kind of buy in to what the publisher was doing you know what i mean it immediately loses trust in everything because how can you trust that you would wait actually till the release date and and then from the uh, journalist side of things, I mean, that's like, I don't know. I don't really consider myself a gaming journalist. I consider myself a, 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 a literal a content creator, right? But it's like, okay, when you think about a gaming journalist, like, is there any other way of losing uh, public trust as quickly as this? Because you're selling yourself out too, right? You posted the review on that Wednesday. Well, you opted in and you said, okay, I'm only going to talk. Po I cannot say a single word negative. I've got to talk about it positively. And this thing, you know, again, to kind of end it and go more broad like we've seen this here and there was it marvel rivals like wasn't there the one thing with creators where they couldn't say anything negative they had to opt in and if they if they didn't do that they couldn't play the game or something i forget i think i made a video on it. i think it was marvel rivals not 100 percent sure but you know this might pop up every now and then and you know again to be fair to be fair, and again, from my perspective, it's like I don't get every game, but I also don't get invited out to those, uh, these kind of big things. So granted, I don't know about like those big ones, right? Like when you have a creator that flies out and they're paying for you, well, number one, you have all that baggage where, hey, they're paying for everything. So immediately it's like, okay, well, the creator might have to kind of kiss up to them a little bit. Maybe not all the way, but a little bit. Okay, well, is there any other strings attached, right? So not only will we pay your way out, not only will you have this preview event, but like, is there anything else? I actually can't answer that because I haven't, you know, and, and yeah, I've heard things from other people and other even bigger creators than me that have talked about that they don't like there's no restrictions but you never know and something like this yeah it's an indie game yeah it's an indie uh, publisher but that doesn't mean this kind of stuff doesn't happen here and there and I don't know if it happens widespread I don't think it happens widespread but this is something that you immediately need to locate and just condemn really truly say no 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 you're not doing that so I'm interested because whatever game that is I think rightfully deserves to be dogpiled and maybe I don't know I guess that's a tricky that's a tricky uh, spot to be in because you do have probably real people, you know, legitimate human beings that worked on whatever game this is and they're giving it their all. And it might be good, it might be bad, it might be somewhere in between, right? And they're not necessarily the ones writing this contract. So it's like the people that are making the game are kind of outside it and they're watching really, I think, public trust. Now, the issue is you don't know what game it is, but you will because October 30th, there's going to be a game that drops reviews and that's the game. And then that same game, when and the game drops officially on the Friday, right? So like the 30th, the reviews come out and it'll only be positive. And then two days later, you'll get the other reviews and that's the day the game comes out. That can only be so many games, right? There's a lot of games that release, especially on Steam. There's a lot of indie games. There can only be so many games to release on a given day. You'll be able to know which one it is. And they did just screw themselves. And I think right, again, from the uh, publisher side, from, from this kind of like legal uh, type stuff, they royally screwed up. So let me know what you guys think. In the comments, make sure as always you're subscribed to the channel, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.